So a lot of the time, um, when we approach this this return to running phase, the first thing to sort out is mindset. Okay, the first thing to really start to get right is your head, because if you're in a place where, and classic right now, you know, if we've got a lot of runners who are in the middle of marathon training, preparing for a spring marathon, you know, whether that's for us guys here in in, uh, in the UK, whether that's let's say Brighton or London or Edinburgh or Paris or or something like that, um, if you miss a week or two of training, perhaps you've been struggling with a little bit of. ITB syndrome and you've caught it early so it's only been a week or two you've had to lay low um, and focus on perhaps a bit of cross training the temptation can be to want to um, to want to try and play catch up a little bit and to try and right from the off set expectations a little is super super important um, not necessarily set expectations in terms of how you know missing a week here or two weeks there might impact your end result of the marathon. Obviously it depends on your program, depends on your, your conditioning coming into the program, all those sorts of things, and your goal at the end of the day. Um, but your expectations in terms of what those first couple of weeks back into training need to look like. So the, the variables that I spend a lot of time talking to runners about um, are very simply kind of described as volume, frequency, and intensity. Um, and that very much is the, um, what's the word I'm looking for, the, the order in which I will build back in your running. Um, the the uh, volume needs to come first, okay? So we go from a point where we just start a couple of tentative easy runs um, at a very, very short distance. So literally, if you've been struggling with ITB syndrome um, and you're looking to then get back out and kind of you know, test the legs out, um, I would, to begin with, want to just get you out for a couple of miles tops and just see how the legs respond. Um, now, that's if you've just been in the middle of your marathon training block um, and you've been running absolutely fine up to, um, up to the point where you've been struggling with ITB syndrome, which again, classically, might come on in the middle of a, uh, a long run. A couple of weeks off, bit of treatment, and then start to build back in. But make sure that as you're building back in, from a volume point of view, you're keeping the volume nice and low, the frequency, you're taking um, rest days in between the runs that you're taking as you build back in, run by run by run. And you are, so you're working on non-consecutive days, and you've been all thoughts of intensity for those couple of weeks as you're starting to get back. Okay, getting rid of those thoughts of intensity is really important. It's important to understand how the, um, the intensity is another factor which can start to put that little bit more stress on your body. Okay, so to begin with, whether it's you know, starting to just take a couple of easy build back in weeks in the middle of a marathon program, or it's completely starting from scratch after a long, long, long period off, the intensity is the last thing to come back. Okay, the intensity has to be the last thing we build back into the program. Um, that's the big thing I want to get across here. Whether it is just a, a little bit of a, a hiccup you've had in the middle of your marathon program, or whether you've had, um, you know, let's say, you know, 12 weeks off for, for uh, struggling with, um, let's say, a uh, stress fracture, the, the last thing you want to build back in is your speed sessions, your really intense hill sessions, your, your kind of tempo work. Okay, the first... If the, again, the longer the period off, generally the longer the return to running program would be. Um, and you know, sometimes even the first kind of 10 to 12 weeks can be very, very, very focused on slow and very aerobic, very comfortable, very easy running. Okay, it's that easy pace, that easy pace that puts the least stress on your body. And you can focus on form during that period. Okay, so I'd want you thinking about posture, thinking about cadence, Okay, making sure you're keeping, you're, you're staying under control, basically, um, rather than just allowing yourself to drop into perhaps slightly compromised posture. You're starting to overstride a little bit, cadence starts to drop. That's going to put a bit, a little bit more stress up through the system. So we're dealing with more ground reaction force. Um, it's really important that we go from this position where the volume is low, the frequency is spread out. So we're taking rest days in between your running days, and the intensity is nice and low as well to a point where the next thing we tweak in is volume. So we start to, over the weeks, and usually, and let's say if we are building back up from a point where we've been off for 12 weeks or so, um, we're building back in a, um, 
uh, week by week by week, still on this three days per week program where you are taking um, taking a day off in between each session, so you're doing them non-consecutive days. You go from a point where, and I really like walk run, you go from a point where you're doing walk run on, on the first session, walk minute, run a minute, times 10, go home. Doing that three times in the first week, you then build to doing that for 90 second reps in the second week, three times non-consecutive days in that second week. Okay, and then you go doing two minute reps. So we're building up that volume, keeping the intensity low, keeping the frequency exactly the same. Okay, three times per week, non-consecutive days. But then as we increase through that, and we get to a point where we're doing, you know, let's say run five minutes, walk a minute, times five or six, as we're doing those, we can then say, right, the volume has increased to a certain point. We're handling it, the body's managing to deal with that because we need time for our body to adapt. We need time for our body to start to, um, to, start to be able to handle the rigors of, uh, of, of building that running uh, volume back in, that training load back into your week. You know, whatever the tissue was that was injured, it needs time to adapt, it, it needs time to build strength again. Um, but as we get to the point where we're doing you know, five minute blocks, usually at that point to get people running for, um, for 20 minutes non-stop. And from that jump where you're doing four or five five minute blocks to doing 20 minutes non-stop, on one hand you look at that perhaps some people and say, okay, that's, that's quite a jump. On the other hand, um, if we look at total volume, actually it's, it's, it's exactly the same, it's a mental game. Yeah, and it's the mental game that you have to win there of taking those walk breaks out and just keeping the pace nice and easy and just building back in that nice consistent run. And then from there, we build, 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 build to a point where usually for me, over um, the, the return to running program I give people, over the course of 12 weeks, and again, this is worst case scenario, but across the course of 12 weeks, we build up to a point where it's, um, uh, yeah, we're getting people doing 40 minute easy run three times a week, keeping it all super easy. From there, the next thing we factor in is frequency. Okay, so with the frequency, we go uh, from three times a week to four times a week. So we try and add in a, a, a back-to-back day. Okay, and make sure that we're only doing one back-to-back a couple of days in the week and the rest of the time we're having those runs spaced out in between. Um, and we are still giving our body, again, with that, those spaced out runs, those, those non-consecutive days apart from our one back-to-back, we're getting our body the chance to adapt, again, to the demands that we're placing upon it. Again, getting stronger as we go, getting more resilient as we go. Then after, usually about a month or so of managing our back-to-backs, still everything's super easy. At that point, that's when we jump in and we start to play with a bit of intensity. And usually, I'd go tempo runs first. In fact, sometimes I get people actually you know, adding in some fart leg work. Um, depends on the athlete, depends on the situation. But tempo runs, okay, Make sure you tick that box, get a few weeks where one of your runs in the week is um, is a tempo run. And then from there, that's when we're starting to add in some speed sessions and uh, some, some more intense kind of interval sessions, you know, track sessions and hill sessions. Okay, so they're the last things to come back. They're the things that are more stressful on your body, more, um, more uh, attri- attritional on your body. Making sure that we take that approach where we go volume coming back first, then frequency comes back, then intensity comes back. That will give you a bit more of a structure to actually have more chance of having a successful return to run rather than um, rather than just trying to play catch up, trying to, try to jump straight back in. Now, as I said earlier, and I felt like I kind of garbled it a little bit earlier, but as I said earlier, if you're in the middle of a marathon training program and you have to take a couple of weeks off, um, it's not disastrous by any means and you're not going to need a 12 week return to running program you know that's that's not that's that's overkill um but even if you have to take a couple of weeks off those first couple of weeks back hold back off the intensity work hold back off the speed work hold back off the um off the off the track sessions you know keep it nice and easy look after your body just nurture your way through those sessions run those non-consecutive days even if you're running a five day per week program um just back off that a little bit make sure again if you're marathon training make sure you are getting those key sessions in the week um so you're still trying to get even if it's cut down version of the long run don't play catch up um, for where you would otherwise be if you hadn't been injured in your program but make sure you're factoring a long run in there ticking the boxes as you go but 
Keep the intensity for all sessions, not just that long run, all sessions nice and easy. Keep the rest days in between. And then as you successfully navigate those first couple of weeks back after your couple of weeks off, that's when you can start to um, that's when you can start to add in a little bit more of that intensity work, a little bit more of that speed work. Whether that involves you having to um, kind of negotiate with yourself in terms of your expectations for your marathon, that's on you. That's very much, um, you know, it, it's individual, individual specific there. It depends on your conditioning coming into it, what your goals were, whether you're kind of, you're ahead of ahead of yourself a little bit program wise and you can you could have afforded to take a couple of weeks off um, or whether you're already on the back foot and um, and this is kind of put a nail in your coffin for your I don't know sub 330 marathon you have to adjust your your expectations that's entirely entirely up to you right let's have a quick look at these comments so um, X Sinclair says took a long six week hiatus after your first marathon in January 2017 so you're listening intensity uh, for walk run how do you know when it's in time to increase the run part? That's a really important question. Okay, so um, firstly, and I won't share the link on here. Maybe I can share the link on here. Hang on a sec. Um, I will share the link in the comments here to um, return to running program I usually give people. Hang on a sec. Program here. Okay, so I've just shared a link to the Return to Running pro program that I generally give people in the comment section here, X Sinclair, so that you can see that. Um, the There's no kind of specific progression criteria other than being pain-free, I give people, um, in terms of going from, you know, doing, uh, let's say, doing three-minute blocks to suddenly doing four-minute blocks the next week. Um, obviously, being pain-free is the big progression criteria there or at least vice versa if you're in pain then you know we're not stepping you up if anything we need to take a step back and address why you're back in pain that's kind of a you know you kind of fail we've the system's failed you there a little bit um, but in terms of successful progression criteria rather than look at that and go right I did three sessions of um, you know six to eight times three minutes run one minute walk big tick of the box um, next week because I tick that box, I'm going to go out for uh, three 30-minute runs. That it just that doesn't kind of work like that. We can't just say, I did this, therefore I'll also be fine to do that. We need to incrementally just increase, increase, increase. I find the 10% rule doesn't really work that well um, in many cases, and I'd rather um, just kind of stick with the, the tried and tested uh, kind of structure that I put together in this particular program that I have linked to here. It's just a free return to running program, which is available on uh, the Kinetic Revolution website. So, right, what's Kevin saying? Achilles flares up after you run started happening after taking four weeks off. Interesting, okay, so again, it depends how you're approaching and again i'm making some massive jumps here kevin in terms of um you know, making assumptions into the kind of the four weeks off and all those sorts of things but um one thing that kind of i thought about as soon as i saw that as soon as i saw your comment there after taking four weeks off is what did your what did your next few weeks after the four weeks off look like you know did you just literally pick up where you left off and Four weeks isn't long for the whole kind of calf Achilles complex to get less conditioned, um, but there may, may well have been some degree of uh, of less condition of um, you know, deconditioning there. Um, it's really hard to say, but at the same time, if you jump straight back in where you were in terms of uh, training load, it might be that could have just been too much for your Achilles. So worth obviously rehabbing the Achilles, getting to a point where uh, you're able to run again if you are off running at the moment. I'm not sure, um, and then from there just gradually working through the kind of the thought process that I started to lay out earlier on where you are um, just trying to reel back in and just gently build volume from a point where let's say if you're running let's say if you're running 30 miles per week um, 30 miles per week when you jumped off um, and at the beginning of your four weeks off let's reel that right back down to less than 50 percent of that um, and then from there just start to build perhaps three runs a week, non-consecutive days, keeping all nice and easy, whether you want to go walk, run, or whether you want to uh, run non-stop, that's up to you. Um, but just tick the box in terms of getting those first three sessions done, and then the next week, just make that a little bit more in terms of volume, the next week, make that a little bit more in terms of volume, um, and then from there, start to add in a couple of back-to-back -back days, if that's what you're used to. If you've only ever run three days a week, non-consecutive days, 
then that's fine. There's no need to push beyond that. But if you're used to running, let's say, a five or six day program, um, then that's where we'd start to get you starting to um, build a bit more frequency. And then the last thing to come back would be intensity. So let's say if before you um, disappeared off for your four weeks off, let's say it was a holiday, I don't know what it was, um, you were you're heading down to the track to do a club night on uh, Tuesday, some intervals on a Tuesday night, um, and you jumped straight back in with that. Um, again, that may have been you know, something which was kind of overstepping the mark. For many people, it wouldn't have been. Okay, It's, it's really, really hard to say remotely, um, but knowing that the Achilles did start to flare up, perhaps I was overstepping the mark a bit, could have had a couple of weeks just keeping it easy, building running back up, and then heading to, to track night um, with your legs you know, back in a position where they're perhaps a little bit more resilient. Hard to say. Frederick, question for James. Opinions, swimming, uh, swimming and spinning class in conjunction with marathon training. Swimming, definitely. Um, great form of cross training. Spin classes is all about managing intensity. Um, I wouldn't do a spin class anywhere near um, a, an interval session or a kind of a, you know, a more intense run session in the week. Um, you could do it, you know, arguably, again, spin class is different from sort of steady state bike. Um, but, you know, you could start to, if you wanted to spend some time on the bike that wasn't perhaps a spin class, you could start to take one of your um, your steady state, you know, easier runs midweek, well, obviously not your long run, but your easy runs midweek uh, and start to um, swap that for a, uh, a steady state session on the bike spin class again it depends what your running program looks like as to whether you can get away with that extra intensity session in the week it might take a bit longer to to recover from although it's obviously non uh, non load bearing or at least not in the same way that running is um, it's still going to be pushing you from a physiological point of view that you're going to need recover from to recover from swimming um, again as long as it's not kind of a you know an absolute um, an absolute punishing session. Um, you again, it's, it's just a great form of cross training and fantastic for your fantastic for your body in terms of actually starting to perhaps e ease some of the aches and pains. Well, think of it as a form of hydrotherapy as much as anything else. Um, right, guys, I am going to hop off this live feed. I hope you found this useful. Um, if you did find this useful, just hit the like button for me. Just uh, hit the thumbs up and uh, give me that little bit of feedback. I would be very interested in uh, hearing what you guys would find helpful over the coming weeks and months as well. So by all means, just let me know, just uh, leave a comment here, whether you're watching this live or watching this after the fact. Um, just leave a comment in the comment section and uh, just yeah, let me know what kinds of uh, topics you'd find interesting for me to cover, whether it's me covering it, whether it's uh, an interview that I, uh, that I reach out to, perhaps an athlete or a coach or a therapist. I don't, uh, I don't really mind, I'm, I'm certainly up for all options. I'm just keen to make more content on this YouTube channel, get to know you guys a little bit better and help you out with your training. Um, while I do hop off this as well, um, you know, just have a, uh, just, just take a second, you know, if you found this useful, like I mentioned earlier, if you found this useful, just hit that like button um, just before I hop off and I will speak to you guys very, very shortly. Right, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Weekend? What are we talking about? Enjoy the rest of your evening and I'll speak to you later. Bye now.